to our floor show traders, Scott Fullman and Thomas Hayes. Tom, complete this sentence. It's 100% the time to buy what and why? Well, it may not be the time to buy everything, Liz, but it's definitely the time to buy something. Warren Buffett has spent a third of his cash pile since the beginning of the year, about $50 billion. So we definitely want to buy high quality companies and sectors that are on sale. And just like Buffett, who's not buying the general indices, he's buying businesses, high quality businesses that have fallen on the tightening cycle fears that now are at such low valuations you just can't resist. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what he bought. The 13F filings, which are quarterly filings that big institutional investors have to report what they bought during the past three months. Basically, Buffett added or bought to, as we said, Apple. He also bought GM, more restoration hardware, Activision Blizzard, uh, CVX, um, McKesson, Ally Financial. And the city, the city ad was pretty interesting to me. And maybe we can put up what he sold or reduced. Kroger, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, Verizon, AbV, uh, Wells Fargo, he completely exited out of that. A lot of people say it's about time, uh, considering they had that scandal several years ago, and the stocks never really recovered from that. Um, I did find it interesting that science uh, Michael Berry is shorting Apple, but he bought Google, Meta, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I guess, Tom, when you look at what the big guys are doing, they're not always right, but they do make a move, and you see this reflected in the financials. Well, if we look at yeah. some of the ETFs, we can see that even the regional financials are looking pretty good. Anything like that interest you? Yeah, well, Citibank is one of the cheapest stocks in the market. It traded close to 50% discount from its book value. Anytime these big banks trade at a meaningful discount to book, you want to buy them. Even Wells Fargo, if you bought during the pandemic in the mid-20s, it traded all the way up close to 60. You doubled your money. And I think Buffett has made a, a big thing here. But the other thing he did was Paramount. If you notice that, this reminds me of his Capital Cities investment in the 80s when he put $500 million into Capital Cities to take over ABC, and then it started to compete aggressively with NBC and turned out to be a big success. So it's interesting that he's in these mar markets. Number one, financials is very interesting. Number two, uh, you're also seeing HP Inc., which was a uh, beaten down tech stock. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities. As a matter of fact, Liz, in the Bank of America fund manager survey this morning, which surveys a trillion AUM, managers are the most short the tech sector than they've been since August of 2006. You know what happened next? The Nasdaq was up 42 percent over the next 18 months. And I do think there's some opportunity in value tech. And I think Warren Buffett sees it, too, in his HP purchase. Scott, let me bring you into the conversation here. I know that you're a gutsy investor. You look at the cross currents. You don't just dive in. Tell me what you're buying and what you are waiting to buy. So here's where we stand, Liz. You know, it's you, you take a look and you're trying to figure out, have we bottomed yet? Uh, is there still risk out there? Of course, there's always risk out there. The thing is, this is like taking medicine and you really don't want to just you know go and take a, a full dose right now. You want to start easing in and finding opportunities. AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, is one of the stocks that I've loved. I own it myself. Um, we've talked about it several times. And the fact is, it got down cheap enough now that you're starting to see fundamental analysts starting to upgrade uh, AMD. And, and that's pushing the stock significantly higher today. I think there are plenty of opportunities out there like that, but we're not going to just Jump in and, and spend all the money right now. You, you put in a little bit today, put in a little bit next week. It One day doesn't make a market. Right. And th this is something people have to realize. You know, we saw a couple of, last week we were talking about how the week before the market was down and felt a lot worse than it, than it really was. Just because we're going up today doesn't mean we're not going to see some more down days. And, uh, you know, people have to be a bit careful. But the fact is, is that, we're starting to see some things bottoming here, and there is value people can go out and buy now. Well, they're buying the NASDAQ. It's up 309 points. It's a big move right now of about 2.6%, considering we've seen such tentative buying on weaker days. Can you just tell me, Tom, I'll go to you, and then, then quickly I'll get Scott's opinion on this. You know, how do you, what is your method of buying stocks at deep discounts? All right, well, I've got, I've got two for you, Liz. You know, there's been a huge amount of fear over this tightening cycle, the fear of re interest rate hikes. And sometimes the fear is greater than the reality. Let me give you an example of the last tightening cycle. 
uh, biotech, the sector, it fell 52 percent in anticipation, the 12 months before the first rate hike in December of 2015. Over the next two years, it was up 140 percent. China Tech, Alibaba fell 53 percent in anticipation of the first hike in the last tightening cycle, while the Fed raised eight times over the next two years, from 2016 to 2018, Alibaba was up over 250% off of those lows. So all the things that people are saying, yeah. if rates rise, tech can't work, biotech can't work. Gotcha. You know, we've been early on these, we've been adding on weakness. We think we're nearing a long-term inflection. So just keep in mind, the fear of the hikes may be worse than the actual hikes themselves. And some of these groups that have sold off because of the tightening cycle, can now get bid and, and lead to good returns moving forward. Scott, your method, really quickly, on how to buy stocks that are deeply discounted enough that you say it's attractive? So first, first we start to look at what the valuations actually are, and then we start to look for the actual upturns from a technical point of view and from a macro point of view. Is there a good story in there? You know, the economy improving towards the end of the year, maybe? Uh, and. Also, you know, just looking to see where the buyers themselves are coming in because you want to catch that wave and ride it up. You don't want to be catching it going down and, and continue to see it deteriorate, watching your funds uh, go down as well. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities there and, and you can find them. It yeah. just takes a little bit of work. Well, yeah, and you can just look and see, oh, something that's a good quality company that's now down 75% and isn't probably going away might be an interesting place. Scott, Tom, great to see you. I am keeping my eye on the NASDAQ because it just hit a new session.